make a few comments about the film and the status of where we are in society. If those of you would like to make a few comments, please raise your hands at this time. Anyone? Comments or questions even? I have a question. What is the, what is the, um, the vaccine, what is the vaccine made of? What is the chemical component that is attacking the nervous system and the brain? Well, I wish they had explained that. Well, they, they haven't really studied that. That's the point. They don't, they don't really know. There's a lot of suspicion that it's the way the viral components come together, that our bodies are not used to having that many live viruses attack at one time, and there's an effect of an attack on the gut and the brain. But there has to be research done, and they aren't doing it. And, the, and this, this study, the fraud, and they're just saying it's safe. MMR is safe. The science is settled. So yes, we'd love to see a study of how it, how it damages and affects the brain, but first we have to get them to admit it damages and affects the brain. Well, at least all of the live viruses, they have aborted fetal tissue in them. There's DNA of a male and a female in there. And this is when you put them in a youth's body. If you talk to the specialists about this, this has an effect on the development of the child as well as what can happen in their DNA. So is there a chemical interaction with the live virus at the same time? The only thing we, I, I, I will not answer that question directly because I don't carry the credentials for it, but I have okay. read about it, and if I told you that, I, you can read, <coughs> read about it yourself online. We have sources that we can go to online, and you can actually see what the, uh, uh, what the ingredients are in some of these vaccines. Matter of fact, they, if you go to the insert, it should tell you on the insert. It should yeah, and it. also in the insert, it says that no vaccine has ever been tested for carcinogenic effects, mutagenic, mutagenic effects, or, or effects on fertility. On fertility. So mutagenic would be how it affects your DNA, or how. You know, right. So they've never even tested that. So there's none not of even us. A, none of us. No, it's in every insert. As a matter of fact, they try to take that Article 13 out of the insert, and it just got put back in. So. Uh, yeah, on the uh, credits, it suggested some actions that we could take. Yes, there's a little piece of paper. On the table. Yes, action items for the. Yes, action items. And you do. call your congressman, and after a week, call him again. Lay into them. Just tell them what's happening. If we don't, they're going to railroad us in the future. Question, is it true or not that you can opt out of having your child vaccinated and still attend public school? Yes. In Ohio, that's still the case. And most recently, they tried to introduce, they tried to introduce, they eliminate the philosophical exemption, where even if you went the religious route, you had to go through a doctor. And we've stopped that because we went to an attorney, and that's a violation of the First Amendment and the 14th Amendment. How so we've got that, that. How's that? How come they don't tell you that, that you can opt out? Uh, it's because a lot of doctors don't even know yeah. that and right now, all you have out. to do is give a statement, really. About that being bullied. You don't, yeah. want, don't bully let you. them bully you. Yeah. If okay. you know anybody that is being bullied by their school and told that they do not have exemptions, have them, con have them go to www.ohioamf.org and, and message us and we will contact the school and we will show them that they what the rights are in Ohio state law and also NBIC.org has a has a copy of the, our state law with the code on it you can staple that to your exemption form and take it to your school sometimes the people at your school are not even educated enough to know that exemptions exist so it's it's just ignorance across the, across the board pretty much there are quite a few of us in this room who have successfully opted out of the Ohio. Yes. 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 And yes. We, uh, I have actually, um, I've, there's several schools that I've uh, written to, written letters, and sometimes I just fax them the code, the uh, yeah. Ohio revised code, and I highlight the second <coughs> circle for them to read. There was a question over here. I, for what it's worth, um, my daughter <coughs> was, I don't even remember exactly about two years ago, but she was deathly ill from the uh, MMR uh, high fever, and I the doctor and he kept saying oh it's just a reaction mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. I um I gave her Lobelia enema and it was like night and day she came out of the fever oh, yes what happens is that, that, it, 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 that it, they did cover that in the film how it affects your uh, uh, digestive system you know we have doctors here 80 percent of your immune system is in your gut and that's that's where the danger comes in Anyone else? I think there's one other one. 
Is there anybody here from the government who would like just make a comment of where they stand on these issues or something? Anyone? I'm a candidate. Can right. Candidates are welcome. Come on down. Right. Just, just want to uh, be respectful. We don't want to give a political argument. Okay. We just want you to understand what we're dealing with and give us your opinion on it. Uh, first of all, my name is Martha Yoder. I'm running for state representative in 64th district. Um, I found it very thought provoking and I agree with what he said at the end, that if you're going to choose to vaccinate, we need to make it as safe as possible for those that choose. And I completely agree, um, whether you're pro-vaccination or anti-vaccination, I'm pro-liberty. I'm pro-personal liberty for our individual rights and, and the, the, uh, the House Bill 170, uh, which is something that if I'm elected, I may be facing. Um, I agree with that, that we need to not let employers um, decide whether we are vaccinated or not. I'm also an employer, by the way, so I understand the needs of employers to have a healthy workforce, but it doesn't violate um, my employees' rights. Right. And what, I w wouldn't want to do that. And so I would, I would be in favor of that. And I certainly am uh, against any uh, making vaccinations mandatory. Um, I'm pro-parent rights. I am... Um, homeschool mom so I believe that we as parents have the responsibility of raising and taking care of our children ourselves it's not the state's responsibility our children don't belong to the state and uh, thank you so much and so I just wanted excuse to know that me. thank you very much excuse me my name is Devin Stanley. I'm going to keep my comment very brief. Uh, like Martha, I'm running for state representative, but in the other district in Trumbull County, the 63rd district. Uh, like Martha, I just came here to become informed. Uh, I have been uh, duly informed. Uh, I did a little research before I came. I'm a father of a two-year-old son, so I've been through this. And uh, when I talked to Joanne uh, in preparation to coming here, I'm past uh, the vaccine period so far that my, my, my child has had. And it was never presented to me as if it was an option. I can tell you that. Matter of fact, it was kind of presented to me as if I wanted this pediatrician that, that kind of came with the deal. Um, there was a spell during my child's uh, first two years of life where we were worried about a lot of things, and uh, everybody kept telling us to uh, you know go see if he was autistic. So my heart does go out to any <clears throat> any um, families who did have an autistic child. Um, and believe that it is related to, to that vaccination. Only a child like my, or a parent like myself, I, I see every blemish, every, you know, every blink in his eye, everything there is in that child. I'm a helicopter parent, I'm hypersensitive, so I, I would darn well know that if my child reacted to uh, those vaccinations and, and lost those things. I, I think as a lawyer, I prove those kinds of cases every day. I mean, it's called circumstantial evidence, yes. and then you can finally get the, the science maybe later on. Um, they made a very good, compelling case up there. Um, I always like to hear both sides. Uh, that's what a prudent lawyer does. That's what a prudent representative does. Um, I put my right away. I texted somebody that I, you know, I trust very well, and and I heard the other side of things already. And I was sitting here very informed to say, what about this? What about that? And they quickly shut them down. So I, I can tell that this is a little bit, a little bit more informed. It's a matter of education, and, and that's what it takes. Number one thing I would take away from this film is uh, where is the vax versus unvax study, right? Right. That's what we all ask. Right. right. So all of those folks, I mean, we have, we have, we have a control right here. How yeah. many people opted out? Right there's your control. Right. Okay. Thank you. You got it. And I just want to tell you. But if you did not sign the legislative letters you would like to, please do so afterwards. HB 170 was introduced last year. It had six hearings on it. We can't get it out of committee because of lobbyists and the influence of pharmaceuticals. I'm going to say it right now. That's a fact. And we finally got a couple of legislators who admittedly say this is what's happening. Okay. Now, if that doesn't come out of committee get voted on by the end of this year, we are going to introduce another bill next year. We're not going to stop. I started on this over 15 years ago when my grandson was affected by, was neurologically impacted. And I'm not going to give up now. And all I ask all of you, it's your government. It's your government. You vote. Let them know how you feel. Well, I'm not against anybody who wants to vaccinate their child. I don't think anybody is. We want safe vaccines. If you choose to vac vaccinate, fine. But you want to be able to choose not to vaccinate as well. We're single. We're single. That's right. So, is anyone else? Any other questions or comments?
Can I tell you one more thing? I had uh, a girlfriend back in the 70s down in Georgia. I had two, two children. Uh, she had her first child and then the child was va vaccinated. And the child lived until five years old. But they never called it, they never said the child went into a coma. They said that her body went into hibernation. Yeah. Like a brain went into hibernation. Yeah. Nice words. That's and very the, friendly. The child sounding. died, and then she had another child that was vaccinated, and the same exact thing happened. Mm -hmm. You would have thought the child was in a coma. So back in the 70s, I'm sitting here thinking they were already experimenting with that. That that is that is actually that has happened before. The whole trouble is that people are becoming more educated now, and, right. and that's good. Uh, the only thing I want to tell you, it's your life, your child. Remember, everybody's body is different. Everybody's body, is, some people can't even take an aspirin. Some people can't even, I cannot take ibuprofen, okay? I can't even. So we're all different. You just can't have one size fit all. So right. that's the reason why educate before you vaccinate. That's all I ask. Of and you. just so everybody knows, yeah. if you know somebody that thinks their child has suffered an injury, they can go and report it to their vaccine Themself. adverse you don't event have to go reporting to your doctor. system. Your doctor does not have to agree with you. The Medical Code of Ethics says that they are supposed to report any, any even suspect, even if they don't have, they don't. can't be even certain, but even if they suspect that there was possibly an injury, they're supposed to ethically report that, and they almost never do. So parents can report to theirs and should. If you're going to do that, you want to go get the lot number, the serial yes. number off of the right. vaccine that you feel was the one that injured your child. In case, all of them. Yeah, from in that case you can day. eventually take it to vaccine. The other thing I want to mention, you have trouble getting a pediatrician. They want to dump you, go find another pediatrician. Because let me tell you, what's or a chiropractor. Is a pediatrician, yeah. <laughs> if they maintain a certain vaccination right. rate with the number of children they have, they get $400 per year per okay. child. So, right. I just thought you ought to know that. That's from a, a, a document that we have. Yeah. Yeah. What's interesting, interesting is there was a baby. Local. There are a number of us in the community yes. who more than just deliver babies. We do full family health, women's health, and pediatrics as well. Are you local? I am. Yes. Very good. Great. Right. Hey. Get her card. <laughs> <laughs> there was a local uh, pediatrician that my sister's kids were vaccinated at, and he did believe that there was a link to the MMR. Let's see, how old are they now? She's 19, and he's 11-ish, and he would not stat. He wouldn't, he knew. So well, see what happens, a lot of doctors, if they go against the recommendation of seeing <laughs> like that, Dr. Sears, by the way, they tried to pull his license in California. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I believe that they came down on him. <clears throat> That's right. That's the reason why, mm -hmm. uh, you know. It, and I believe, I'm not sure, yeah. but I think what he did with the billing and everything was fake the funk on the records well, yeah. to not mm -hmm. well, to he, not show that he didn't do it according their, to their way. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else but he said he did or? not have the autism rates that the other doctors <coughs> had. Did you have something you want to do? Hello, my name is Tim Morris, and I'm with the Cobalt County chapter of the uh, Campaign for Liberty.org. We are what's called a, a Tea Party group by the media, but we don't like that group because we're constitutional patriots. And as you can see from the media, uh, they're controlled. You should take it with a grain of salt, but not a ton of salt, <laughs> what, what they say about us. And uh, we are uh, one of the oldest Tea Party groups, or uh, patriots, we've been around since 2007. We're a watchdog of elections, government agencies, and the like. And we have our meetings every Thursday at just a few hundred yards up the road that way up in Niles Perkins. In fact, we have a special meeting in honor of this Donald Sachs tonight. So if you want more information, you can go to campaignforliberty.org or you can uh, call us up to the Perkins. And if, if, uh, if you don't have time for that, we're going to be uh, there on uh, November 7th. Or you can email me at Trevette. You have, if you have a card, you can give them a card. Do you have a card or anything? Unfortunately, we just don't uh, okay. do it. Uh, okay. uh, but you, you can email me at the veteran777 at AOL.com. I still have my Ron Paul bumper sticker. Yeah. I will not I will not let it die. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, <laughs> thank you all for coming. Yeah, thank you. And um, get the message out and exercise your right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's the Blair Witch Project. Thank you. Yes.